Well, thank you so much for that. That was, that was super. I've not seen the, uh, the light is a particle wave um, yes. word before. I mean, that was, that yes. was uh, no, very good. This, this, yeah. this is an ambigram which has been drawn by Douglas Hofstadter, yeah. who, who likes this kind of ambiguity, and he wrote this famous book about uh, Gödel, Escher, Bach, where he compares uh, the imagination that mathematicians must have with musicians and, and, and uh, artists. Yeah, it was brilliant. I must yes. get it off yeah. you later. Yeah. later. Yeah. Uh, we've got time for a few questions and hands already going up, so please, there. Can you wait for a microphone to uh, come around? And if you're on the gallery, wave wildly, because I can hardly see with all these lights. Right. Okay. Professor, many years ago when I was studying physics, I did an experiment with a fellow student to study the quantum oscillations of bismuth at absolute zero. Yeah. I can't for the life of me remember what it was we were trying to find out. Could you refresh my memory, please? Excuse me, I didn't catch the you. The quantum oscillations of bismuth at absolute zero. Yes. I did this experiment, yes. but I can't remember what, what it was we were trying to find. Uh, Could you refresh my memory, please? <laughs> uh, we, we, look, uh, we, we look very often at quantum oscillations between two quantum states, and, and this gives information about the coupling of the system with the light field, and and this quantum oscillation enables us to prepare state superposition and tangled system together. So it's really a knitting, is a kind of knitting uh, step for knitting entanglement and getting more and more complex systems. Thank you. Very, okay. many, many thanks indeed. Thank you. Okay, in the, in the gallery next. Hello. Uh, yeah, carry on. Uh, is the um, branching caused by the like uncertainty principle and that way you uh, said that the Schrodinger's cat was both alive and dead. Yeah. Is that only because there's a like sentient person observing it, or would that happen anyway? Uh, I think it uh, it would happen anyway uh, if there is a coupling to to a measuring apparatus or to an environment. It has nothing to do with the, with the consciousness of the observer. But of course, the consciousness of the, of the observer is itself a quantum system, if you want to look at it in this way. And uh, uh, the uh, Everett interpretation tells us that the, the state of the observer is also, is one, is, is, which, who is registering the result of an experiment is one branch or the other of this multi-branch uh, universe. But, uh, uh, the problem is that uh, this, this can be built into a consistent uh, interpretation, but it does not differ at all from the uh, explanation that you have just a random result, and there is no way you can explore these other branches. So as long as you have no experiment which can tell you whether this interpretation is better or different from the other, it's just a matter of, uh, of taste. And uh, it's not my taste, but uh, <laughs> there are some physicists who like this idea. And there, for instance, that a quantum computer would be computing in different versions of the same universe to, to just to get the result in the end. I think you can, you can do, explain that that way, but there are more economical ways to, to explain it too. But uh, uh, this is my, my point of view. And what is very fascinating with quantum physics is that almost 100 years after its invention, it is still open to debate. What I find also absolutely and even more striking is the fact that these people in the 1920s found the truth. In fact, Einstein and Bohr and Heisenberg described a theory which is still valid 90 years later, and some of these people did not like at all what they found. Einstein never liked it, Schrodinger never liked it, but they were like good detectives. They had hints, and it is like a detective which finds that it's a member of the family who is a murderer, but if he's a good detective, it will follow uh, his uh, research up to that point, and this is what these people did, and I think this is a, a tremendous uh, testimony to the power of human mind, to be able to imagine, to imagine these kind of things, even if, if their psyche is resisting against it. Thank you. Please. Oh, one thing you showed us with your talk was that there were problems at the end of the 19th century that were thought to be trivial, yes. but then turned out to be hugely important yes. for the future of yes. physics. So my question for you is, 
What is the most important unsolved problem in physics today, and why? Uh, you know, it's, uh, I, I, could, I could say many things, but I am not a spe specialized in this domain. But of course, cosmologists are talking about dark matter, uh, about uh, dark energy, about which would explain the uh, uh, accelerated expansion of the universe. So there are certainly some uh, uh, matter that we, which is uh, uh, which does not interact with light, so which is very difficult to detect in the universe. And if this matter does exist, it means that we will have to correct, uh, or to or at least to to complete the, the standard model that we have now to explain all the uh, interactions. Uh, there is also a big mystery, which is why uh, uh, the gravitational field is not included in the unified, in the unified theory with the other one. The quantum, mm -hmm. quantum gravitation is not established on firm grounds. And this is again, com it again comes back to Einstein. Einstein played a major role in relativity and quantum physics, in general relativity and quantum physics. And we are exactly 100 years after general relativity, and there is still no uh, agreement between general relativity and and quantum mechanics. There is not, uh, not a, a full-fledged theory which explains that in a unified way, and I think this is one of the big issues. So whether this issue will have some consequences in our daily lives, like the, the small problems about light had. In fact, when I quoted uh, Lord Kelvin saying that we knew everything about physics, but he's supposed to have said, except two small clouds, about uh, the ether and, and uh, uh, the, the black body radiation. And these are the small clouds which led to relativity and to quantum physics. So. OK. Please, yeah. Um, in, okay, wait for the microphone. In your view, who's the most influential person on quantum? Uh, that's, a, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> I think. Uh, the people I quoted, Einstein and Bohr, certainly, and Heisenberg and Schrodinger, too, because they, Einstein and Bohr were, had some hints and they give some qualitative description, but the people who made really the theory quantitative and useful for predicting things are uh, uh, Schrodinger and Heisenberg, and, and to uh, a large extent, Dirac, too, was very important. Mm 